Okay, so Pi News episode 24, and thanks very much to Daniel Duran, who's given me two tips for this uh, episode of Raspberry Pi News. The first one up is amazing, and uh, you've got to watch the video really, so I can't really play the video in my video. Uh, it's best that you go and watch the video. I'll just show a few sort of stills from it, but basically it is a Raspberry Pi compute module, which is basically the Raspberry Pi 4, but stripped of all the connections. So it's designed to go into smaller builds and boards and be worked on and things like that. I haven't done much on the compute module because it's not really my thing, but it works really well in this project because it means you can build a much smaller device uh, and add all these bits on. You have a look at the picture here. So these are magnets and they're designed for attaching various different bits to it. So things like a camera and a joypad and a trackpad and a keyboard, uh, HDMI, SD card reader, all sorts of things can be added to it. Uh, and they're also flush, so they're um, very safe uh, when you're putting things on and taking things off, it looks really solid. Uh, but if I skip on a bit, you'll see here there is a, a monitor that you can attach to it. You can see the keyboard there as well, various different maker things that really isn't my thing, but, but is really impressive. This is the new design and you can see that it's lovely and flush. And just the way that things clip on, it's worth just watching this video in its entirety to, to see how well it's been done and, and just adding things on and taking things away is really, really impressive. And the amount of detail that goes into on this. You can see there's a fan that clips on the bottom, bit of a noisy fan, but uh, obviously that could be an early days now. The Pimeroni fan is super quiet and it'd be worth getting set a fan like that in it. So you can see here, keyboard and mouse dongle, goes on to put on an HDMI adapter, connect it to a monitor, uh, but the, it, you've got to watch the video because the, the flow of the video is excellent, and it just keeps getting better. And even right at the end, it's, uh, it turns out to be a portable little laptop, and this is actually a trackpad, but I'm not gonna show any more of it because it is one of those things that you just have to watch the original video, but it's but thanks to Daniel Duran for letting me know about that. Next up is just something that looks cool, really. Um, now, Philips do this to a lot of their LED TVs uh, where they add backlighting, but the backlighting actually adjusts to whatever's on the picture. So if I go full screen on this, you kind of need to show a little bit of this, but I'll show it in low res. If you want to watch it, there's always links in the description, um, but basically, uh, you can see how the color splashes work and everything. I have got that on super low resolution, but uh, it is a really high quality video. But basically, the LED lights are controlled by a Pi 3B in this case. You can use a Pi Zero. Uh, there's two linked videos uh, which show you how to do it. So, and the first, I haven't watched the second one, but the first one is really good, really good details, really shows you how to do it. Um, but there's a system that it uses, yeah, Hyperion is uh, a system that it uses to control the video. So the video you're watching, but there's all sorts of variables on this and it works on loads of different systems, but really, really impressive, just looks cool. And yeah, worth watching that in high res because it's kind of mesmerizing the image, but also what it does to the wall in the background. Next one up is from Jazz808, so thanks for this comment. Hey Lee, FX3 Pinball and more is now running on the Pi 4. And it says that the link has been taken down for arcade punks, but you'll find a search of the name will find a torrent. I'm not really into pinball stuff. Um, it, it's not, I quite like a, a proper pinball machines, but playing them digitally, I've never really, I've downloaded them and had them in the past, and I think I had them on the Amiga and various other things. They don't really appeal to me much, but people who are into pinball will love it. And RK Punks has a video of it. So Zen Pinball, Rimshot, 8 gig. So I'll just put that on a tiny bit. So you can see various different systems there. So if you're into pinball, that'll be something worth searching for. Next one up, uh, Daniel Duran also sent me uh, a link to Edex UI, uh, which is this here. And there's a GitHub for it, and I, ha I was having a look through it, and uh, it, it gives you, what it says is like a Hollywood style uh, interface, and uh, it does look cool. You can see here, so there's various different screenshots in this GitHub. And I was looking how to put it on the Pi and I was gonna maybe explain it in a video. So when I turned on my Twister OS, Pi Apps had an update and I thought, I'll have a look and see uh, if it's available uh, with Pi Apps or Pi Kiss. And uh, Pi Apps has got it. So there's a link in here. This is 
This is the update that it's that's showing me all the new things that are there since I last did it. And you can see here, Edex UI is just one of the things on PyApps, so super, super easy to install. So let's do that update. There's all sorts of other things in there as well. Chromium Widevine, uh, Descent 1, Descent 2, Doom 3, various different things that have been updated. So let's do update now. Didn't seem to do anything, so I'm just gonna double click on PyApps and see, maybe it's done it already. So I guess eye candy. Yeah, edex UI let and install. Okay, so that's installed. Let's close that down. We'll close down PyApps and have a look down here. And the good thing about Twister is if I just start typing it, it will show up. Oh, well, we've got two versions look, and it looks like the newer version is 3.0.0. So let's click on that. Okay, I've restarted because nothing happened when I tried to launch that. And uh, after restarting, I tried to launch it again with this Edex UI 3.0.0, nothing happened again. So I tried the 2.2.2, and you can see it's come up with this option here, welcome to app image launcher. This little helper is designed to improve your app image experience on your computer. It appears you have never run app image launcher before. Please take a minute and configure your preferences. Now, I don't, I don't know what this is, so I'm just gonna put okay. So let's do run once uh, because I don't, this is my main version of Twister OS, which I tend to use for Pi News and various different games and things like that. So let's just run it once and see what happens. So there is a chance that this may only run in Raspberry Pi OS because it's not working there. Uh, let's try that again. Okay, so it looks very different. Uh, it's kept the operating system running because uh, my screen capture device is still going. It looks cool and it's got some really cool sound effects to it as well. So we've got all sorts of things here like time and date, CPU usage <laughs> just looks really nice, uh, memory usage, top processes, and you can see Edex UI is there. Uh, so I guess the folders work. Uh, show disks. Yeah, boot disk. And you hear, I'm gonna to have to turn the sound up. I don't know if it'll pick up on my, actually the screen capture should pick up on those sounds. And we've got an on-screen keyboard here as well. So if you were using it on a touch device, if I put it on my, yeah, it would look cool if I put it on my 14 inch uh, Raspberry Pi touchscreen tablet uh, and nobody would know what I was using here. Uh, so world view, endpoint, latitude, longitude, network traffic. Yeah, super impressive. Right, I don't know how to quit out of it. I would say, maybe if I just type exit. No. Quit. I can always use Alt F4. Uh, oh, new version available, look. So that's, that's it, just letting me know. Obviously I've got, I should have 3.0.0 on here as well. Yeah, it does look impressive. I mean, it is just, it, it's a bit of fun, really, isn't it? It's not necessarily an op operating system you would use. But uh, the sounds and uh, and just the overall look is very cool. And I saw from the site there's various different customization. They're also working on a vertical one as well. Uh, so rather than a horizontal screen, a vertical one. So you imagine if you've got all your information on the side of your monitor uh, in this interface, it does look very interesting. Right, I don't know how to quit out of this, so I'm gonna do reboot, maybe. Okay, and last up uh, is uh, another great tip from Daniel Duran. Check this out, really improves Pi performance. And he sent me a link to uh, Hayden James's blog, and uh, it's about using ZRAM to increase RAM performance. Now, if I scroll down a bit, so ZRAM creates RAM-based block storage named dev ZRAM 0 or 123, etc. Pages written there are compressed and stored in memory. This allows for very fast in and out and also the compression savings provides additional memory. And you can see that it works with all the Pi 4s and uh, he says he'll be using the Pi 4 one gig model. Now, I haven't got a one gig model. I've, I've, got, I've got some two gig models and I had initially set this up to do a video uh, last week, but I was I returned to work from furlough last week, so I've had less time. And uh, I set up two Pi 4s, 
both of them I installed clean Raspberry Pi OS 32 bit. I installed ZRAM on one and didn't on the other. Started to do the test, uh, but I just I just ran out of time and I need more time to do something like that. I wanted to show it side by side and what the performance was. But I wonder if it's going to affect that much on 32 bit Pi OS uh, with four gig of RAM. I get it with a one gig Pi because you are definitely going to run out of RAM, but I rarely run out of RAM. I don't think I ever run out of RAM on my four gig Pi. Now there may be more to it and there's lots involved in this. So have a look through all the instructions and there's loads of things you can adjust as well. Um, and you can install it. And the way I did it was just to install it with these two lines. Uh, and it installed and came up successful and did seem to be nice and snappy, but Raspberry Pi OS on a four gig Pi 4 is nice and snappy anyway. And if I scroll down to the bottom, it was this bit here. So my setup went from unusable and freezing to performant and stable. Now I haven't had unusable and freezing on my Pi. Uh, it certainly was Raspberry Pi OS 32 bit. So maybe if you're using something like Ubuntu on a one gig Pi or a two gig Pi where uh, it's a 64 bit operating system and, and RAM is, is very important and you do get lots of slowdowns. But I don't know yet. I need to look at it more and see what operating systems uh, it's useful for and where it's going to benefit me. But I think I'm probably still going to do that side-by-side -side test with Raspberry Pi OS, but I may find that there's not really a result from that. But it's if you've tried ZRAM, if you've had success with it, what have you found that it's definitely improved on? Uh, what are the bits that, that you found it's more optimized? Um, I, I just need to do more tests on it, but it looks very interesting. And first test, it did look and feel very snappy, um, but uh, I wonder how much difference it's gonna make on a four gig or an eight gig Pi, um, but, uh, but maybe it still will. Anyway, uh, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much to everybody who's given me tips. Please like and subscribe.